Welcome to another edition of Life in the Arts Classic Light, the art enrichment program featuring art lessons, virtual field trips, student films, performing artists, and more. Life in the Arts is a program that your entire family can participate in and enjoy. On today's show, lovely and talented artist and teacher Melissa Pickford demonstrates the tools and techniques involved in creating piosanka, the ancient Ukrainian art of egg decorating. And now, Melissa Pickford. Hi, I'm Melissa Pickford, and this morning I'll be sharing with you what I know about making Ukrainian egg designs. These are called pisanka in Russian, and I'll be teaching you easy ways that you can do this yourself. Uh, when we begin with an egg, I, um, we are starting today, I'll show you that we're starting with a white egg, and I'm going to show you the different steps that I went through to get to this final purple egg. The first thing is I took a clean, dry, uh, white egg, and then I drew on it a little bit with pencil. I drew my designs first. That's a helpful hint. That'll probably help you feel more comfortable when you're starting this craft. And then <coughs> I draw with my tool, as you saw demonstrated in the tape, I draw the designs on, and I'll be doing a demonstration in just a few minutes to show you how I actually draw on the egg. So what I'm doing when I'm using the white egg is deciding which designs I want to remain white because I use wax to cover the color. It covers the white so that these designs I have so far will be white on the final egg. And after I drew the designs over the white shell, then I dipped the egg in yellow and let it soak for probably about three or four minutes until it, it becomes a desired shade. If you just keep soaking it longer, it'll be a deeper color. So then I decided I wanted to make some little birds yellow. So now I'm covering this yellow dyed eggshell with my wax designs of my little birds. Those are the only things that I added on the yellow layer. Those will be yellow in my final design. Then I dipped my egg in pink and let it soak for a long time, maybe five minutes, to get the uh, real nice deep magenta that I wanted. What I decided to make pink were these little tri-petal uh, floral designs here, these spirals here, and these little hearts. I'm just using symbols that appeal to me, and I encourage you to choose symbols that you like, things that mean something to you, have special meaning in your life. So these, these symbols will be pink. Then I dipped the egg in turquoise, and I decided that what I would have be turquoise in my final design are these little circles and spirals and this, this fish. And uh, fish symbols are, are a nice thing to try. They're easy to draw. They're some of my favorite things to draw when I do my Ukrainian eggs. Then I dipped the egg in a final coat of purple. And what I decided to have purple, I haven't drawn yet. I would, would spend time now drawing over the purple layer some designs um, so that I would have a final a bit of color that was purple. Now, you notice as I worked, I went from light to dark. That's very important that you go from your light colors to your dark colors as you work. Because yellow can cover white, pink can cover yellow, turquoise can cover pink, and purple can cover turquoise. But you wouldn't be able to do it in reverse. So just remember the rule for Ukrainian eggs is light to dark. When it's time to remove um, dye from your final egg, Actually, you're removing wax from your final egg. When it's time for that, an easy way to do it um, that we don't have available here is to put the eggs in a 200 degree oven and leave the door open, place them on the rack, and then just begin to take them out and wipe off the, egg, the wax as it melts. But today I'll show you the old way of taking off the wax to reveal the color. 
what you're going to be doing is getting it near the candle flame, but never in the point of the candle flame, because that's where it's very hot and can actually make burned marks on your eggshell. But as I'm removing the wax, you can see I'm revealing that lovely deep magenta, that was how far you want to go with your drawing. The more drawing you do in wax, the more time you'll have to spend with this last final wiping stage. And that's what I'm doing here, and I won't take the time to finish it. But you, can you see that my brighter colors are emerging? It's a lot of fun, this final step, when you're removing your wax to see the fruits of your labor, to see your designs revealed. And um, I would suggest to you that you start very simply when you do your first egg so that you can be easily pleased with your result. I've had children as young as six and seven enjoying this craft once they get the hang of using the tool, which I'll demonstrate now. So were I to finish this egg, I would just keep wiping until all my designs are revealed and all the wax was removed. What this also does is it coats the raw egg with a uh, thin layer of wax, and then that uh, seals the egg so that over the centuries the yolk will just dry up. There are Ukrainian eggs which are hundreds of years old and the yolk just rattles inside like a little dry object. And if you don't drop them, <laughs> they don't ooze out. They'll be uh, able to be preserved for a long time. So I'm starting out today with an egg that I just imagined this morning. I did draw in pencil first. And I'm going to show you how I use this tool, which is called a kistka. The kistka is constantly heated in the wax, heated in the flame, so that the wax is liquid and can be drawn. What I do is I scoop a little wax from the cake of, and this is beeswax, which has a very nice smell. And I'm always dipping it into the flame. I also make a few strokes on the paper towel that I've got here bunched up to serve as padding below my raw egg. And then when you draw, keep your kistka um, at a right angle to the egg, meaning it's, up and it's upright. You don't really hold it like a pencil. It's always at a right angle, 90 degree angle to your egg. And You'll get the hang of working with this tool so that it feels more smooth and your hands feel less wobbly when you do it. But I encourage you just to enjoy circles, spirals, dots, and lines at first until you get more comfortable with drawing more complex designs. Once again, I'm doing the fish, which is a great favorite symbol of mine. Now remember, everything that I'm drawing will remain white as I dip this egg in dye this wax will have sealed over the white, and uh, so it'll end up nice and bright towards the end of my project, my egg. And I'm adding a little bit of kelp since we're in the Monterey Bay region. I always see kelp in my life, and um, it sort of goes with the fish designs. And it's easier if you try to do a long, smooth stroke. Keep your wax flowing by keeping it in the candle flame. Dip in more wax so you always have about a, a three-quarters three quarters full cup of wax. It's like a tiny cup there that I've got going. And sometimes you get blobs that flow out unexpectedly. Just try to enjoy them and make the mistakes into a different shape than you had planned. Um, sometimes eggs break, and then you just keep a sense of humor and start over with another egg. And it's, these tools are wonderful because you can get really fine lines. I'm doing the little lines in the kelp leaf now. And remember that if you want something to stay solid white, you can always color over a whole patch of wax. And it gets blackened by the charring in the flame. 
which is actually very handy because then you can see what you've drawn and you can guide your own artwork a little bit better. Okay, what should I do next? I think that I'll try another little fish. The Ukrainian egg started many centuries ago before Christianity came to Russia and it's always been a women's art and it's one of the things I really appreciated about it. It was a way for women to honor the coming of spring, to hope for renewal and rebirth and new life every spring. They used an egg as a symbol for fertility and uh, life beginning again after the very cold winter in Russia, winters are so cold, they used the Ukrainian eggs and decorated them as a way of praying for the light and warmth to come back again. And the eggs, of course, had many uses in their lives, and very wrapped up in the way they believed the world was. If a farmer, for example, didn't have a good crop in his field, his neighbors would decorate an egg and roll it in green oats and plant several of these eggs uh, below his f in his field, below his plants, to hope to make them healthier. If a family was childless, a woman wasn't able to conceive a child, sometimes she was given a beautifully decorated Ukrainian egg as a, in hopes of her being able to have a child. People believed that having a bowl of beautifully decorated eggs in the home ensured prosperity and health and wealth for the family. As you can see, I'm just continuing to enjoy drawing. And this will take many more forms as I work. So I'm going to now dip my egg in dye, in the yellow dye. And what I would do next after letting it, I would let it soak longer than I can now, but I would let it soak about three or four minutes. Always be very careful. Use the plastic spoons because those are less likely to break your egg. And hold your egg very carefully as you blot your dye off of it. Before you draw your yellow designs, you'll need to make sure the egg surface is dry and not shiny and wet with dye. Now I get to decide which designs I'd like to be to appear as yellow. And notice I keep dipping in my wax and I keep heating it over the flame. And this could take days for me to finish this, or at least a few hours, depending upon how, many, how complex I'd like it to be. Sometimes I just let my imagination flow as the wax does and imagine shapes and designs as I draw. And I encourage you to just relax and enjoy practicing with your kiska. And this Easter, you're going to have some beautiful eggs for your holiday. They have a wonderful history and as you work, Try to recall all the many Russian women who spent cold winters developing this incredible uh, art form. Their designs are quite beautiful. There's some in a, done in a simplified way in black and white. They're very geometric. So I encourage you to try this art form. It's a lot of fun and develop your own style as I have. The eggs in front of me here were done by several colleagues and friends in classes that I've taught. And you can see they're, they're so varied. There's so many ways you can do a Ukrainian egg. And uh, you'll be amazed that it's a lot easier with practice than it looks. So I wish you good luck with your attempts. What I would do next after this is dip in another color, a darker color. I think I would switch to pink. This pink is a little bit darker than yellow. 
And then after that soaks for a while, I would take the egg out and draw the designs that I wanted to appear as pink. So I'm going to continue working on my egg and tell you goodbye in Russian. Do свидания and good luck with your Ukrainian eggs. Thank you, Melissa, for that terrific lesson. We're going to talk to Melissa and find out a little bit more about working with the eggs. You went through the process with the eggs. Let's talk a little bit about some of the, the items that you use uh, to, to do the coloring, the dyes and the, uh, the eggs themselves. Um, Okay. Is, there, is there some safety? Maybe let's talk about safety first. If there are parents at home that may want to do this with their kids, we're talking about handling raw eggs. Are there any safety things that they parents should know mm -hmm. about? You do use a raw egg because it, after it is completed, it has a thin layer of wax on it, and it becomes a sealed egg, which then just dries out from the inside out. There are Ukrainian eggs, hundreds of years old, and your yolk will begin to rattle as a dry object for mm. after two or three years. So um, they're safe to hand once safety. they're complete. Mm -hmm. They're See, safe to yeah. handle. You do want to use a raw egg. If you used a hard-boiled egg, it would rot in two weeks and you wouldn't be able to even eat it or enjoy it. Also, the, the dyes that we use are Ukrainian egg dyes and um, you, your regular Easter dyes, too pale, won't work. And so a, they no, are toxic dyes. Okay, so, so this, these, are ver these dyes are very different from what people may buy in the grocery store around Easter time that are non-toxic, great right. for little kids to right. use for other, other projects. I would recommend that parents work with children who are maybe seven years and up and supervise them absolutely all the time. And um, I would also recommend wearing the little surgical, surgical gloves to mm -hmm. cover their fingers and then so dye doesn't get in mouth or anything like that. I, I worked with children and they're fine. I mean, not, there are ways of making mm -hmm. this safe. But supervision would be, mm -hmm. in this particular type of project, yeah. supervision would be important. Candle flame and it is toxic dye, yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, one thing I noticed, it, you had a great tape with a, a woman making these very complex eggs and talking a lot about the history of, of the eggs and how they evolved through different religious systems. I think maybe some people may be uncomfortable with the religious aspect, mm -hmm. but it really, it looks like it's really an art form that survived a lot of incarnations. Mm -hmm. It's true. It began, we don't even know when, how old this art form is, but it was a pre-Christian tradition. Some people use the word pagan to describe that, and it just came out of peasant life. Mm -hmm that um, the drama of weather and of family tragedy had people develop artistic superstitions, as it were, so that they made these eggs to protect themselves as a prayer to the universe, to protect their house, their children, their family, to ensure healthy, prosperous mm -hmm. life for people. So they can be seen as a women's early spiritual tradition. They can be done in absolutely non-religious ways. The eggs I do are not religious at all for me. So this would be a, a sample of where it's, it's, it's really art, and you can choose to make it religious-oriented. A lot of the eggs have symbols that may be religious-oriented, or they could be symbols for whatever are meaningful mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. Women of the Christian church in the Ukraine, uh, Russian Orthodox Church, do use symbols which, which are indicative of Christianity, which express their, express their Christian beliefs, but you can make them absolutely uh, non-denominational oh. eggs. In fact, I'm working on my own egg right here, and I had the, the toughest time trying to come up with a, an idea for them because while I celebrate Easter, I wanted it to be a non Easter type egg. Mm -hmm. So there were a lot of other shapes and symbols that I could use just to make it artistic and colorful. Mm -hmm. When I work with small children, they practice writing their names, you know, and they have their own name egg, or right. hearts, spirals, just geometric shapes are lovely, triangles, circles, lines. So what you're, what you're saying is just enjoy it. Use just it as an art form and an exercise. Mm -hmm. And the fact that most of these are available either through local or mail order, mm -hmm. the, all the, the dyes and, and the tools. Some of the supplies are available in Monterey. Searles Art Supply will carry the beeswax and the Kistco, which is the writing tool that you're using. Right. And um, I, there are several sources through which you can buy a kit, which will include beeswax, 
Kiska Tools and Dye. Okay. There's a huge Ukrainian community in Minneapolis, and I have an address of a gift shop there where they have everything and more that you could ever want for doing Ukrainian eggs. Okay. You do not hard boil your egg, Sage. You need to use it raw, and by drawing on it with so many lines and layers of wax, it becomes sealed, and that egg will remain intact and won't smell at all. I have eggs here um, in front of me that we uh, we did two or three years ago, and they don't smell at all. If you crack your egg, it will ooze and begin to smell. It does sometimes happen. You just have to be try to, try to be careful. In fact, why don't we show a couple of these sample of these eggs? Let me mm -hmm. pull one. Oh well, she's then we see. Now these are how you said these eggs are two or three years old. Yeah, most of those are. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were to shake these eggs, you can shake that one. Now this one's kind of glucky. Yeah. It's kind of got this one's newer, but it's drying up. It's drying up. Let's see if there's one. That's even newer. That's even newer. It's not even shaking yet. Yeah. See if I can get one that. <laughs> which one would you say is really? I get nervous when you shake yeah. my eggs. Um, try the purple and green in there with this the one? words. Yes. Okay. Nothing. No. Nothing. But it, it will happen. I, I it'll feel like sand inside. It'll be like a sand. It'll shake like sand. No, you say no noise. No Just noise. Just no noise Just at all. Just a dry, sort of. Just dry. Thumping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the last time that you were with us, we talked about your father's work, and your, um, you've got a book, uh, your father has a book, um, and why don't you tell us a little bit about that, and this is some, an opportunity for people to see more of his work. Uh, this, Nove this last November, mm -hmm. just before Christmas, this book was published by California State University, Fresno, where my father was on faculty, where in Fresno he built his career. Mm -hmm. It was written by my brother, Joel, who spent the last three and a half, four years following my dad around, oh, asking him great. questions and photographing all his work. So the book has 120 color plates of his paintings, which show um, his great spirit of experimentation. Mm -hmm. the, the paintings are from 1940 to 1997, wow. an incredible variety of style. And um, also includes a dedication to my mother, who's been incredibly supportive of my dad throughout his career. <laughs> my parents 50 years ago just oh. had their 50th anniversary and then they were <laughs> painting and together in the landscape so the paintings are largely Fresno area landscapes but my father did spend a lot of time at the coast and there are coastal images uh, as well and this book is available uh, people can call me my name will be on uh, the screen okay. my number will be on the screen they can call me at home to inquire about looking at or purchasing the book. Okay. Yeah. So the, if somebody wants to get involved with this as a hobby, let's, let's price it out for them. We're talking 3 to $6 for this. The wax that you uh, use? Beeswax lasts bees a little, wax. goes a long way. That little candle was 2 or $3. Your dye is probably okay. the most expensive item. Eggs are cheap. Mm -hmm. um, the dye, probably for about eight colors, cost me around $20. Okay. But it lasts a long okay. time. You get a lot okay. of eggs. Okay. And eventually we'll get a materials list up to you, and that will kind of that way you can just jot down, and there's, there's the materials list. Um, and you can go and take a look at the, at, um, there's the, the eggs, what, $2 a dozen, the beeswax we talked about, the dyes. There's been a lot of these you can buy not only at Searles, but in the grocery store. And it's a great way to use up those old candle stubs that are around right. from holidays. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The, you can get most of the, those things at, at Searles or any of the other. Now, Searles may be the only place where you can get some of the specifics for the Ukrainian eggs. Don't you, not, not every art store carries. No, not every art store. <clears throat> There's a woman at Searles who's of Ukrainian descent. She's a very good Ukrainian egg artist, and she will be thrilled to help anyone who wants to begin with that craft. Okay. All right. Now, you've been working with me, and very patiently, I might add, on my <laughs> egg. And I'm at the second level You're doing great, of my eggs. Have yeah. I sat it here long enough? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's very pink. Now, very this is what it looks like. Coming out. It's very scary bringing it out of this dye. And have your paper towel okay. real close to, to gently lift it right into your paper towel. I don't want to get too much. And you, ooh, got to watch that flame. You want to have egg on fire? Yeah, let's. Blow it See out. now, my egg has. I noticed that 
it had a little white left over. That's kind of something natural with the egg. It, it, it may have had something, the egg may have had something on it or uh -huh. a slight smear of wax or something. I, it's hard to say. say. Okay, but not to worry about that. For a beginning egg, it's just fabulous. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if you could make a living off that. Make a living off it? Um, there are very professional egg artists. I would... Egg artists. Egg artists. I would doubt that they could make a, enough money to live on. You could make these, get very good at them, and sell them. Uh, certainly, if you combined it with other arts in your life, you could have a business selling your art, sure. Is this the type of, you know, just from that question, there are a lot of farmers markets, a lot of artists markets now that are very popular. People like to come down and look for things that they might not see anywhere else. Would that be the type of opportunity that if you practiced at this, and you really liked it and you got pretty good at it, that would be an avenue? Yes, you're giving that. me good ideas. <laughs> but you I could also do personalized too. eggs for people for Easter gifts or the birth of a baby or something like that. How nice. See, though, that's a good idea. And just as if you wanted to do this as a business, you then just try to make a bit, if this caller wanted to do it, you kind of make a little business plan, figure out how much it costs to make it, and then see how much people would pay for mm. it. First, see if you fall in love with it. It takes a lot of patience. You have to just adore it. And a steady hand, it. too. I mm -hmm. found that was the <laughs> hardest thing to do, even with the lines. You just have to have no coffee. Yeah. Just no. <laughs> yeah. Now, and practice makes uh, semi-perfect. We don't go for perfect. The Ukrainian women have learned since babyhood, you know, how right, to do how these to do eggs. It. And they can do incredibly geometric, intricate designs. Well, and the, the film that we saw, they, they had triangles with lines through them and all those were all different colors. Do you, did they map out their design ahead of time or did they draw, design it as they go? Now, I design as I go. I'm very free form and spontaneous with it. In the Ukrainian tradition, there are designs passed down from, say, grandmother to granddaughter, mm -hmm. age old sequences of shape and color mm -hmm. so that uh, things are repeated over the years and always consistently drawn and dyed that way. It's a okay. formula. Okay. Mm -hmm. And w some of them have meaning for but for springtime. Fertility, springtime. Um, nature related. Healthy crops, happy families, safe house, you know, all to wish for all the things we like in our lives. Okay. Okay. Now, do you, how many of these have you done yourself? Probably about a dozen eggs. And over, I teach the class every spring. Uh -huh. I don't do it until it's spring. It's part of my yearly ritual. Uh -huh. I think, oh, it's the blossoms are coming out. Better go buy eggs and start practicing. <laughs> Segments from Life in the Arts can now be viewed on demand on YouTube.com. Just go to YouTube.com, add slash longtimers, and that will take you to our YouTube channel. Next time on Life in the Arts, Dali will travel to Los Angeles to the Los Angeles County Museum of Art and go on a private tour of the exhibit Dali, painting and film. Don't miss it. Next time on Life in the Arts. Thank <laughs> you.